So what's exciting about these Communities Create projects is that we're wanting to really bring people together in this time where we're all apart. Be part of a time capsule of life during the pandemic through Creative Outputs. Hi, I'm Ramona Pringle. I'm the director of the Creative Innovation Studio at FCAD at Ryerson University. Uh, and this is Communities Create. Uh, I want to say to every hi to everyone who is in our live session with us right now. I want to say hi also to anyone who's watching a live stream. You may be watching the live stream on the Communities Create website, on YouTube, or on CBC Arts. We're so excited that CBC has been a partner throughout all of this as well. A little bit of background. I know every time that we do this, we've got new people who participate and uh, and many of you who keep coming back. So a big shout out to you as well, because that's really awesome. It's just seeing the regular faces come back each week as well. The goal of Communities Create was to support independent creators um, to also be able to leverage those creators and their talents to help unite Canadians in this unprecedented time to use creative output to share um, expressions of how they're feeling. And we are now so many months into not only this pandemic, but communities create. It's really remarkable looking back and seeing all of the content that's been created, all of the participants who have joined in our sessions, all of the artists and the communities that we've been able to feature and collaborate with. It's really, really uh, pretty remarkable. And, you know, we're sort of nearing the end of all of this as we near the end of August. Um, Today's session uh, is with another one of our wonderful collaborators, our friends in the north at CBC Yukon. And what we're looking at today or what we're covering today is self-portraits. Today's workshop is on exp uh, expressive self-portraiture with Mark Kelly, and it's presented with uh, CBC Yukon. Now, before we get started, I'm going to go over some ground rules just to make sure that everyone has the best possible experience as we do this. Uh, number one, and this I think is by far the most important thing, is play along, try the exercises yourself. This is a participatory workshop. You know, we sometimes lovingly, jokingly call this Peloton meets Art Attack. You're going to have the best time if you actually uh, participate in real time. Um, we, uh, um, uh, so that's that's uh, that's the main thing. Uh, again, to everyone who's watching the live stream, even though you're not in the session, tweet, use social media platforms with the communities, create hashtag to introduce yourself, ask questions, play along, share your work. We do monitor that and we can respond to that in real time as well. Uh, for those of you who are inside of the Zoom session right now, a few pieces of housekeeping. The first one is pin the communities create thumbnail. You may need to scroll through thumbnails depending on how many people are in a session to find it, but you wanna pin it to make sure you're getting that sort of broadcast view and you can see all the examples that Mark is showing as we go through the session. Uh, use the chat function to uh, comment and ask questions. Your microphone will be muted throughout the session and the moderators will unmute you if you've got a question to ask. Any audio will be recorded and archived, um, and that brings me to video. Your video will not be recorded and archived, so I encourage you to leave it on. There's something really, really nice about seeing everyone else's faces, seeing who's participating in real time. Uh, so if you're in here, even if you're feeling a little shy, don't worry, it's not going to end up on the live stream. Uh, that's just Mark and me, maybe a little bit of Dave. <laughs> um, but uh, definitely keep it on so that you can be part of this live session. It's part of what's so nice. It's just the little community that we form each week. Um, last but not least, uh, I want to start introducing some of the members of our team. There's so many people who make this possible from the technical team, our incredible creative interns, the social media staff. Uh, but we've also got a, a, a mental health and mental well-being task force that works with us every week. So I'd like to introduce Rachel Jewett, who heads uh, or who's been working on the mental health task force. One of the reasons that we've been doing this is really to give people a creative outlet for their emotions and for how they're feeling. So Rachel, maybe you could just say a few words about your role here and uh, how you're here to support all the participants. Thank you, Ramona. Uh, so like Ramona said, my name's Rachel. I'm a, a PhD psychology student at Ryerson and um, a member of this, this team. And Basically, the reason I'm here is that um, in these workshops, we're, we're being asked to think about how we feel. And sometimes when we think about how we're feeling, it can trigger intense emotions. Um, so my role is essentially to be a safety net and support for anyone who might be feeling uncomfortable 
um, or even distressed and want to talk about that briefly after the workshop. We really don't anticipate that anyone will be terribly distressed by any of the content um, today or what it might bring up, but we also don't know exactly. We can't always completely predict. So we want to be here to support if, if it does bring up anything for you. Um, so I'll be available through the chat, which I'll be monitoring during the workshop, but also mainly during a short debrief at the end of the workshop. So feel free to stick around at that point if you want to talk about anything. Um, we also have a list of mental health resources available on the Communities Create website that I'd encourage you to take a look at if you're interested in, in more individual or any longer term support. That's all and I hope everyone has a wonderful experience today. Thanks, Rachel. Now I'd like to introduce Dave White from CBC UConn. Uh, Dave, it's great to have you here. Uh, if you could tell us a little bit about the reason you wanted to join in, we're so great that we could feature the North uh, in um, sort of the, the map of Canadian communities that was participating in Communities Create. Um, but we'd love to hear from you uh, why you're so excited to be participating. Well, I, I think it, it starts, uh, Mark uh, approached me, I guess about a year and a half ago and I've known Mark for quite a while, and he said, you know, there's a really interesting thing happening in the Yukon. There's, there are a lot of photographers here. Uh, there are a lot of people who take up photography as a, as a bit of a hobby because it's a beautiful place and they, they just really get into it. Uh, and in, in a lot of cases, those people end up becoming, you know, professional photographers, some of whom travel around the world. And so Mark approached me with the idea of doing a podcast uh, to talk about, about the community, about the interesting things people get up to. Uh, and and we just really, we had some really amazing conversations talking to people like wedding photographers, people who go all over the world and and shoot, uh, you know, uh, well, everything. Let's be honest. Uh, and it's just, it's just been uh, it's just been a really cool thing to 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 learn more about photography and to learn more about Mark. And Mark Mark has a background as a as a counselor as well. And a lot of the things we've talked about uh, on the podcast centers around um, photography as a as a tool for healing. Uh, and I thought, you know, and we've also mentioned this a lot that everybody, everybody carries around a pretty good camera now in their pocket in the form of a phone. And if you know how to use it, you can take some incredible images. And, you know, Mark is a, Mark is a very talented photographer. He's a very engaging speaker. We have, we have these great conversations. I always have to cut him off. Like that's 40 minutes, Mark, you've got to stop. You got to stop asking all these questions. So it's been uh, it's been really uh, really enjoyable, really uh, uh, educational and enlightening to uh, to talk with Mark on the podcast and to to hear him uh, speak with people. And when you it's actually an idea you you had, Ramona. You know when you when you approached me and said we're going to start this communities create thing, and uh, you know what sort of what sort of thing would work in the Yukon right away. I thought of Mark uh, just because his enthusiasm for photography and his enthusiasm for the for visual storytelling, uh, it's just, it's really, really uh, inspiring. So I thought he would be a great person for this kind of uh, a venue, for this sort of uh, event, and uh, just delighted to, you know, to be part of it. And that's excellent. Well, I think um, that is the perfect segue. So without further ado, over to Mark. Uh, Dave, I think, did you want to introduce him anymore? I think you've done a great introduction there. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I'm a bit blushy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's nice to see you all, uh, those who have their pictures up. Uh, so I'm dodging with these graphics because this is, there we go. And uh, anyways, uh, welcome to, from the Yukon. Nice to see you all. I'm glad you're here. And uh, this is my first time uh, doing this kind of thing online, so uh, bear with me as I figure it all out. I'm already noticing I'm in a bit of shadow, but I hope that's okay for everyone. Uh, anyways, uh, so we'll get started. I'm assuming we can just unmute and start talking if you want. That's completely cool with me. I, I really do want you to interact with me and don't want to have this as a, as a, uh, as a bobblehead news type thing where I'm just talking at you. So. If you have any questions, when they come up, just ask me. So um, as I said, I'm Mark Kelly. I'm a, I'm a photographer up here in the Yukon. I spent 27 years as a trauma therapist. I've worked all over the North. Uh, I spent three years working with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission as a, as a team lead for uh, clinical matters with uh, residential school survivors. And so that's uh, my background. But my 
my passion has always been photography. And so uh, I did a master's degree in the use of photography in the change process. And so that's, that's uh, where I'm coming from with this. And uh, so when I got asked to do this, I thought, wow, what a perfect thing for a guy like me who is, who is uh, never used that in his practice very much. It's not a, it's an art therapy that gets rarely requested. So um, I've kept up with it, but I, but I don't do it very often. So I'm really keen to get going with this. Uh, I'm coming to you from inside, uh, as Dave called it, a bunker. <laughs> it's, it is not. Uh, I am in a meeting room in a place called CoSpace, which is a really great sort of creative incubator here in the Yukon, here in Whitehorse. And uh, so I have a desk here and I, I spend some time here because I don't know if anybody else is like this, but working at home uh, is brutal. Uh, I, I, I like it, but I also don't like it. And so I'm here. Plus, my son had an overnight last night, and so they're ripping around the house right now, and you'd not be able to hear me at all. And I'd be in a blanket for it. Uh, okay, so let's get started. What is creative self-portraiture? What is expressive self-portraiture? So I'm, I'm curious what you know, what you think of when I say that. What is expressive self-portraiture? Anybody? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I'll take this opportunity to have a coffee while you're thinking. Is it easier if I just tell you? <laughs> okay, so the idea is to take what you've got in your mind and in your heart, what you're feeling and what you're thinking and translate that somehow into a picture. So um, think about like Van Gogh cutting off his ear, right? his self-portraiture, his self-portrait. That's a very famous painting self-portrait. When that what do you, what emotion do you feel when you view that image? I'm going to look at the chat. So you can also put it in here by chat too. That would be, that would be fine. So when you think about his, so sadness, what is it about? So Cheryl just said sadness. So what, what is that? What do you mean by sadness? Unpack that one a little bit. Uh, do you want me to unmute myself? No, yeah, please. Yeah, say something. That'd be great. Well, just because um, he went through the physical pain of cutting off his ear, that makes me feel sad for him. Okay. So so he might have been feeling sadness himself, or you're feeling sadness as the, oh, dude, that's, this dude now is missing his ear. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, Marnie's saying despair. So tell me about despair. Just, uh, it strikes me as, as it must be such anguish to do something like cut off your ear. So um, it just, as I thought about just despair was the thought that came to my mind is that, yeah. yeah. Fair enough, that makes good sense. So he must've been going through some, some significant angst to, yeah. to sever his own ear, bandage it, and then paint it, right? Right, yeah. So when you think about when we're doing this with photography, uh, well, actually, let me ask, is anybody here just by show of hands or even just saying out loud, is anybody here do, do painting or any other kind of creative medium? Yeah, okay, right on, a few people. Well, what, what is that? What, what, what do you do? I write. <laughs> okay, oh, right on, excellent. That's a, and, and writing, uh, you know, of course, writing is constantly paired with photography. Uh, they're often in balance, right? Especially when we look at media, any kind of media, print media or online media, social media, it's all connected with writing. So excellent. So there's a few other hands that went up there. Uh, hey. I like oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I like uh, doing some collage art. I find it is really uh, helpful to make interesting images and shapes. With, uh, with collage art, uh, do you use magazines and, and, or do you mix it with your own work? Uh, yeah, my own work mixed with various, whatever I can find laying around. Right on. That's awesome. Yeah, so I, in my practice for years, we used, uh, I just bring a stack of magazines, especially when I was working with young people. Uh, and we would just have a theme, body image, let's say, for example. And we would just create, but I mean, collage is great for body image stuff. But um, yeah, right on. And do you do that quite a bit, Luke? 
I do, yeah. I find like if I'm reading a book, and maybe this is like <laughs> some book lovers out there might not like this, but if I'm reading a book and I like something, I'll just tear it out and feel inspired to create from from that. Fabulous. Uh, I want you to hold on to that thought of the book. I have a set sample idea in my mind that I, I've seen and I, I didn't put it in the examples, but I'll talk about it when I get to the examples. And if I don't, Luke, can you remind me to, to do that? Yeah, yeah. Right on, thanks. Uh, Desiree, you had something you were saying. Yeah, I like to use photography as a, as a way to, to release some, some energy. Ah, oh, right on. Uh, so you're totally in the wrong workshop then. No, because I want to do this because I, it's feeling vulnerable, right? When you, when you do a self portrait. So I wanted to experience that from, from a different lens per se. Right on, right on, right, right. Using the great metaphor of a lens. That makes sense. Um, there's a couple well, of comments you. here. So, um, oh yeah, here we go. All right. So there's some people chatting back and forth. That's great. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on a little bit into uh, what I think self-portraiture is in the context of our conversation, and that is really trying to connect how you feel with your experience and the collective sense of being in this pandemic together. So like we are, I'm here in the Yukon, and I'm assuming people from are from all over. Like, wh where are you all from? Whereabouts are you all? Toronto, okay. Toronto, Toronto, right on. <laughs> okay, anybody from not in Toronto besides me? Ah, right on. Desiree, you're in Whitehorse. Nice, Catherine. Right on, it's lots of Yukoners, awesome. That's awesome. Oh, hi, Pat. <laughs> it's, uh, bit unnerving to have your old boss on here. <laughs> okay, so uh, so what I want to do today is we're probably get a chance to make one or two images. Uh, if you we're going to do a little exercise, take a few minutes to go off and do that, and then come back. And if you're feeling comfortable, we'll, we'll show some of those pictures. Uh, I've got in the slideshow here, I've got a few shots of uh, that I've made as a just in preparation for this workshop. And I'll show you those. But before I get into those, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about what gear you might need. Now, I think if you'd seen the intro video that I did, um, what I said was just whatever gear you've got is the best gear. So there is that adage out there, the best camera is the one you've got with you. So I always keep one in my car in case I see a Sasquatch. Uh, but in this context, I, I have something really simple. So I just have an iPhone, which is what I made. Everything that I'm going to show you uh, of me, with, I made it with my iPhone, and uh, just a little tripod, just a little tiny, just a little tiny tripod uh, that folds up really tight. You can put it, it fits right in my briefcase. And, um, and these are really inexpensive. You can get them for less than $100 at a store if you don't have a, a tripod at all. But you can imagine uh, it's difficult to make uh, portraits of yourself without um, uh, some way of holding the camera. Like, you know, most of us are doing it in a sort of a selfie way with our camera held out way up here, you know, like this, um, that, which is totally legit. But also having something on a on the camera, try, having a tripod is, is really helpful as well. So um, I'm just going to grab the little holder. Most of you have probably seen these sorts of things before with it's just it's just a little clamp that expands to hold your phone in and uh as dave was saying in the intro uh, we all have one of these in our pockets and so this thing just holds my phone just fine and then if i want to put a portrait i can rotate the, the tripod so uh and then i don't know 10 15 dollars i think i got this at the dollar store yeah, they're everywhere now so uh you'll need something like that if you want to just use a tripod that's it. That's the gear. A light source would be the last thing. And a light source is whatever light you've got. So uh, in film, we always talk about available light and in photography, the same. And that's just the sun or the moon and some way of filtering that. So today, as you can see, I'm getting this bit of a glow above me here, which is from this single light. It's a single track light above. And uh, it's giving a bit of a beam down the center, but 
Uh, that's the light I've got, so that's the light I'm gonna use. That's the end of it. That's the gear. You can go hardcore if you want. Is there any DSLR users out there? I know there's a couple that I, people that I know in the room, but. So I'm just sort of reading the comments at the same time. If you have a DSLR, then the same thing happens. The only thing you would need is a trigger, either using a timer, uh, uh, like the, the two or 10 second timer, if you have a DSLR or a, a regular camera, uh, even a point and shoot will have a, a timer on it. And I think even most smartphones uh, now come with a timer, uh, which you'll probably want to use too, just to give yourself some space to get where you're going. So if you, you know, you got to set it up and then get in the picture. Um, and then that's it. It really is got to be that simple because otherwise we won't do it. All right. Do you have any questions about that? Pat, yeah. Are you tapping the screen? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to show you this, this thing, which I bought at a Christmas craft fair. It's a local woman in white horses building it. And it's a little bean baggy thing to hold your cell phone. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. And it's very flexible and you can put it anywhere and it's soft. And anyway, what, those of you in white horse watch for her at the Christmas crop fair <laughs> as a tripod. <laughs> that's awesome. Actually, I tell you a great story about that kind of thing. I was shooting in um, Times Square in New York City uh, one year and at Christmas time and uh, I had my tripod and I was doing my thing and the police stopped me and said, uh, do you have a permit? And I'm like, from Whitehorse, right? Like, permit? Who needs a permit? And uh, two other fellows were there and they, you know, pulled their permits out. And I, so like what they, they, they told me I was a professional because I had a tripod. And so I happened to have a bag, a bean bag with me and I took every photograph in Times Square off of parking meters and bars and stuff because the police wouldn't let me use my tripod. And uh, yeah, so a beanbag is a great thing to have. Uh, and if you don't have, see this very talented beanbag tripod maker at a craft fair this Christmas, uh, a bag of lentils will do. So if you happen to be traveling and you feel the need, uh, go get a bag of rice from a, from a cheap store or a bag of lentils and that'll work just as well. Yeah, there's no, no need to spend a lot of money on this kind of thing. I wanted to show my, my what one I made this is a tripod out of Apple cards. You can also, and credit cards, you just cut it. You just make oh. like two cuts and just put it together and it holds your phone. That's like it so works, great. Yeah, it works perfect. Like it does not like, it's not good for like outside, but it's great for in my, in my apartment and stuff. Yeah, you just put the phone right on this, this phone. You just like put it like that. Oh, but this way or that way, and you just make it so it's the cheapest one because it's just your old cards. <laughs> That's super cool. What a great use for those old cards. Yeah, I have and tons then, of the Apple cards. When you cut it, did you uh, to slide it together? It's just a slot. You just slid it a little bit, and they just slide yeah. Just... I found the directions online. It was okay. on this. There's this website. There was a link that said like ten DIY um, uh, camera tripods. And then this was the simplest one. It just, you just follow the directions, like just make the slits here and then you make two here to do the width of your phone. And then, yeah. Totally doing that now. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Thank you, Ashley. That's awesome. Okay. So let's move into some ideas here. And um, so I've talked about the gear, the light source, tripod, all that stuff, but I'd like to show you some so, so as I was getting ready for, to come and talk to you, I was going online and having a look at a few of the different options that are out there, like what people have done. So it's not just what was coming out of my mind, but what, what other artists out there are creating. And I found some really uh, very interesting uh, self-portraiture that might fit very well to our current context of COVID-19 and being sort of being tied down in a pandemic. Um, actually, before I go into that, though, I want to ask a question. For those of us in the Yukon, and I think I can probably, uh, I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, I know that. Uh, our lives haven't changed a huge amount here. There, there has been some changes. We've definitely struggled uh, with some things, but in general, we've been able to live our lives because we have so much space here. What's it been like for, for other people outside of the territories? 
I know Toronto has been really challenging. Let's talk about that for one second. I'd be interested to know. What's life been like where you are? Pretty, pretty isolating in many ways because I'm in Toronto and uh, so uh, things like, uh, you know, the ability to, uh, to, to get out and to get, to get places. Uh, it's amazing the excitement that comes when a store opens. So. <laughs> I can imagine in a big center like that, that uh, not being able to just go to the corner store is, is actually really isolating. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. What about the folks here in Whitehorse? What's it been like for you? Well, I think it, it has been isolating. I'm here in Whitehorse and I think the hardest thing in the early days was not being able to hug my own daughter because she'd been away in Jamaica and had to come back and self isolate. And she was all alone and you just, you couldn't be with her. And then later on was just feeling quite vulnerable um, because of my age and I've got some lung issues and, you know, not being able to hug your friends has been the hardest part for me. Yeah. Family. Thanks, Pat. I, I, I really resonate with that idea of isolation that, that, that um, what we've been done, we're even using it in our, in our, our everyday language now is to be isolated to be so socially isolated or to socially isolate. And, uh, you know, as humans, we're not designed that way. We're not, uh, and, not and if you live alone, like your daughter was, or like you are, it's, it's can be really difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Richard, is it okay, Richard, if I read this out? <laughs> Giver. <laughs> Giver. Nice. So I think you all can see this. More than he's saying, more than anything, the most difficult part for him has been finding a balance between social distance while still being social. And I think that's a really good way of putting it. Which will be a nice, Richard, just write that one down for yourself. That's a nice theme to be putting into your imagery. Okay, well, let's move into those, uh, let's move into those um, ideas now, the different thoughts, the, the different types of photographs that I came up with here. So this first one um, is by uh, Rachel, I forget her name all of a sudden here, because I'm sharing screens with my PowerPoint. Um, Rachel Barron, uh, I don't know where these are. I, 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 I literally Googled expressive self-portraiture and these are some of the ones that I thought were really strong images. So this particular image, I just think is so compelling. Uh, she's obviously done a composite where she's added some confetti to the photograph. Um, but it's, it's just strong. And for me, it was like, I'm not angry. I'm, my head is full of all sorts of craziness right now. And, uh, but I, I'm, I, this motion is full, of, it gives me that sense of despair. And so I, I just thought, wow, this is great. So she's obviously done this in Photoshop, in post, uh, which you absolutely could do is, uh, or, uh, sure. I think I could share my screen. The same picture that's showing up beside my face here though, is, uh, what's on my PowerPoint screen. So, um, oh, right. And then if you pin it, yeah, that's right. If you pin this, if you pin me to your main screen, then you'll always see what the slide is. Anyway, so the, so the idea of this one just, it just was totally compelled by this, the feeling in her face, the, the uh, confetti coming out of her brain that's super strong. So I, I just described this first one, and this is something that's really important for you to know is if I describe it, if I look at the image and then tell you what I see, you now see what I see. You, it affects what you see. So I'm going to do my best not to describe the next ones, but I'm going to ask somebody and I'm going to randomly pick. <laughs> somebody to answer the question. So I'm going to move to the next image, which is by Ben, uh, ben um, 
uh, it's Ben Weber. And this one also came from the internet. So Desiree, I know you personally. Can I ask, what, what, what's that make you, what's that make you think of when you see this photo by Ben? This one to me just means like getting out and being free in nature is kind of what I get from that. I just have you on the little one, but for me, it's freedom and just being able to be um, without judgment. It looks like he's just not caring about anybody else around him and he's just in the moment. That's kind of what I get from that one. Hmm. Nice. Anybody else see that or something different? What I liked about this photo was that it has um, exactly what Desiree said, but also uh, it's, it's very overwhelming. At least for me, it was very overwhelming that, that there's a sense of immersion and in pot, while you can move through it, you can't escape it. Whatever that it is in this case, the white substance, snow or whatever that is. Cheryl is saying the burying underneath the snow. Yeah. <laughs> the aftermath of a pillow fight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, but it's a, but it's not as harsh, right? The, there's some peace in her face. So when we're looking at doing our own stuff, the expression on our face will be as important as the context or the subject that we put in the photograph, how we show our emotion will be important. Okay, let's go to this next one, which is also a composite from an Instagram feed. And this is um, by Carly Siciliano. And uh, I don't know these people, by the way. As I say, I just randomly pulled them from the internet, which is a, obviously the best place for you to get inspiration. So, okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to just randomly pick somebody. Grace, how do you feel about this image? if you're willing. Or anybody else for that matter. Any thoughts about her image here? So Rachel's saying mysterious. Can you say some more about that, Rachel? Vulnerability and comfort in your in being in your own space. That's from Jeannie. Yeah, there is a vulnerability in this photograph, isn't there? And if we, if we look closely, like if you can zoom in on the shot, if you're on a full screen, uh, I can totally understand where that's coming from. Uh, so Rachel is also saying that curious about what she's holding. Uh, and what she what she looks like, what's her actual face look like, and there are aspects that feel hidden. It's true. There's a privacy to this photograph, isn't there? Yeah. You'll move into the next one. So this is uh, this one is um, by uh, let's see. So Anderson W. Wrangle is his name. What are some of your thoughts about this one? I really like this one. So this one to me is, yeah, somebody, Cheryl just wrote Discovery. It's shadows, but is it your own shadow or somebody else's that's coming through? Um, that's what spoke to me was, was kind of dealing with your own shadows um, now that you've got the time. Mm -hmm. Right. One of the things we've been given here is the gift of time, right? Is that uh, all of a sudden we've been able to maybe 
willingly or unwillingly look at our own things that are going on in our lives, our family, our work, our relationships, our health. These are all things that have been thrust upon us that we've been able to ignore mostly in our busy lives. But all of a sudden, many of us have been given a lot of time. You're right. Yeah. Thanks, Desiree. Uh, Cheryl saying discovery. I'd like to hear more about that, Cheryl. It seems like he's peering through uh, the light and discovering something or someone. Did you say discovering? Yeah, right, discovering. Mm -hmm. Right, like a first look at something, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So uh, what I want you to do in this moment is just to, let's take it one, one second, one less than one minute to write down some of the emotions that you felt that you, that when you looked at these last five images, I think it's five, right? Four images, have a look and just do a little internal scan, close your eyes if you like, and just take a second and write down a handful of the emotions. You don't need to share them, it's just for you. And then once you've done that, put a little asterisk between the one, by the ones that were the most intense, the ones that you felt the strongest. And then take one more second to just write down where the physical location in your body you felt them. Was it in your heart, your tummy, your head, your shoulders? Where did you, where did you actually physically feel that emotion? And just keep that to your side there, because that's going to be helpful for you when you start to make some of your own images. Now, I need to ask our uh, tech hosts for how much time is left, because Dave did say clearly that I am terrible with this. I just keep on talking. So how much time do I have left? About 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that? Perfect. OK, 15 to 20. Let's quickly move on to the images that I made and give you some more examples. So this, uh, this next one is uh, me. These next four are me. And so in this pandemic, one of the things that I decided I wanted to do was get healthier. And I had been an avid mountain biker in my 20s and while I was away at university and in my master's degree. Uh, and But I'd let it go in the last five to 10 years. So I have absolutely uh, rediscovered this. So this is a picture of me with white horse in the background out riding my bike, my son's just to the side of me. Uh, but this is a selfie shot where I'm, you know, I'm holding the camera just with my arm, which is just fine. And so uh, I wanted to put this in here because uh, it's, I want you to create, this is the thing I want you to write down for yourself right now, create an image that matters only to you, that doesn't ever gonna go on display, but it matters only to you. So a selfie with my new mountain bike, that only matters to me. It doesn't even, it doesn't have to, it just has to give you a feeling of something that matters, a way of representing something that matters. This next one is, uh, is a as a collage or a composite or a yeah collage I guess uh, of me rediscovering music. So uh, for a long long time um, I was married and my partner did not like loud music, and so I bought very expensive headphones at the start of the pandemic. And this is a picture. These are pictures of me dancing in my studio the other night, uh, just <laughs> into some old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like some old school Aerosmith was on my headphones. <laughs> I just found myself doing this. And uh, I created this is my private self. The 
dance when no one's watching? What do you look like in this isolated time? How does it, how do you feel? How do you express yourself when no one else is paying attention? Okay, we'll move on to the next one, which is, um, this is my representation of me being completely indecisive. I cannot make a decision to save my life right now. And so should I shave my beard or not? Now, as you can tell, I clearly made a decision, but it took a long time and I needed to actually, it took days for me to decide to shave or not shave. But it was rep this idea here is, is representing myself in a time where uh, I need to be decisive, but I'm unable to be decisive because the time we're in is so uncertain. So I don't know if I make a decision now, if it's gonna be a good decision or not a good decision because we don't know what's coming down the line. And for someone like myself, that's really unsettling. And then this last one, I made a mention to it the other day about the gift of time. Um, and I don't know if you can tell in the, in the box here, this, <laughs> the, the clock is blurry. I blurred the clock out on purpose because I look back and go, oh, it's only been since March. And I look forward and go, it's, it's been since March? Like I can't, time just feels very slippery right now, very, doesn't feel, it's very ethereal, doesn't feel right, doesn't feel normal. And uh, that also is messing with my ability to make things happen for myself. So that the, the, I needed to spend some time really considering what, how I'm feeling. And the look on my face, as I was mentioning to you earlier, the look on my face is quite important, that sort of resting face. It's like, it's almost angry because I can't feel, I don't understand what's happening. And I, I did this one, I have to be honest, also I did in my studio with lots of lights and, you know, after a couple of beers. <laughs> so, but this is, this is uh, representing that side of me, this need to know what's going on in the time, the time being elusive. And how unsettling that is. Okay, so I want to, so is there any commentary on that? Any thoughts about that? before I move on to the next section, because I would like to get, get you in. Um, Jeannie, I don't know which one you love, but thank you. <laughs> and Desiree, you, you said you feel that one. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what I'd like to do is move into the next one, which is around composition. Ah, uh, the one of me listening to music. Thanks, Jeannie. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so composition. Let's have a look at that. So what I want to say about composition is, is for most of us in photographers, most of us photographers, composition is sort of a thing that we, um, we really lean heavily on. We pay a lot of attention to. It matters the most to us. In this, it only matters if you express yourselves uh, in, in the sense of how you want to express yourself. So com how you frame your image only matters if it helps to make you feel or express the feeling. Otherwise, don't think about any of the rules. Throw it all out. It's irrelevant. And then think about composition from this standpoint. What makes you, what makes you feel? What makes you drawn to a photograph? When you go and start creating your own images and you look back at them, how does it make you feel? The ones that make you feel strong, strongly, the emotion is strong, those are the ones you pay attention to. Those are the keepers. So don't worry about if it's blurry or if it's off, uh, it's not set on the rule of thirds or something like that. Don't worry about that. Just pay only attention to how you feel. Because if you feel something strong about this, so will your audience if you just choose to show them. Okay, so we're gonna take uh, another couple of minutes, two minutes maybe, to do this piece. Write down how you're feeling right now. 
close your eyes and think back on the last five months. What emotions rise to the surface first? Which are the most intense? Write those down. And what thoughts or words arise? Write those down. So I'll say it one more time because I'm going to flip to another screen here that shows you uh, some base emotions to help you with the words for emotions. What emotions rise to the surface when you think about the last five months? What were the most intense emotions you're feeling? And write those specifically. And what thoughts or words arise? Write those down. And then if we could flip to the next screen, which is the how are you feeling today poster. Here's some um, base emotions, human emotions. You may have to go full screen to be able to see this, which is a lot of me, but also a lot of that poster. So we'll leave that up. And then if you need to me to re repeat the, um, the messages, then I will, I'll just repeat them for you. So let's take, let's take two minutes and do that. while we're working on this exercise uh, mm -hmm. a question from the youtube screen asking uh do you suggest any editing apps yes i'm just responding to that now so um so i use uh photoshop lightroom and photo mechanic uh there are lots of free apps out there that you can get on the internet and not many are better or worse than the others the ones that I use, Photoshop, Lightroom, and Photo Mechanic are all pretty standard for photographers. Yeah, Snapseed works pretty well. If you're looking at things online, uh, sorry, on, on your mobile device, um, the same suites that I use from, Nova, from, um, from uh, Adobe, those are available mo in mobile as well. Uh, of course, there's a subscription fee but there are plenty of free apps out there and really they're trying, I can't keep up with them. They come up so quickly on the app store. Uh, and I'm assuming for those who use Google uh, play, those would be very similar in, those, in that store as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, another maybe half a minute and then we'll come back together here. Okay, so the next thing I want to just the sort of follow up part to that exercise is this here. So what I'd like you to do is consider this now from a visual standpoint. So you've got how you feel and the intensity of that feelings from the previous part. You've also got where you're feeling things and your, what part of your body you experience things, feel experience those emotions. Now try to think about what pose you might hold. So on those intense emotions, the ones you wrote down again. How would you hold that pose? How would you, how would you show that to a camera or to an audience? How might the lighting be? Would it be like the spotlight guy or would it be more soft light? Like the woman with the confetti coming out of her, out of her head. Would you be alone? Would you be with somebody else? Would you be uh, inside, outside? Would it be in a place that you feel safe, a place that you feel vulnerable? So just take a minute 
literally a minute and write down some of those things. Okay, let's come back in together here one more time. And I'm looking at our time and thinking, gosh, where did it all go? We're already at the end here. And so uh, whether we have a chance to make a couple of images or not, I don't know. Let's, let's see, while we're talking here for the last couple of minutes, if you feel like doing a selfie with something similar, I'd be grateful for you to do that. Hold up your phone and show it. Uh, otherwise, we'll just quickly chat about um, some of the things you just did. It's, does anybody feel like they'd like to share what they uh, what they just came up with? <clears throat> well, Mark, you can you hear yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'll share something. Uh, I'm, as I'm sitting here, I'm kind of watching this um, show course on my TV, and right beside it is um, it's a picture I took of my daughter and her boyfriend um, out at my cabin in Manitoba. They're in the middle of a river, and it's this summery picture with all kinds of beautiful uh, water sparking. They're throwing water on each other. Anyway. My idea for this picture is that uh, because we can't go there, we can't be there, I can't see them, that I would somehow uh, have myself kind of um, in this picture with them, to take a picture of me in the picture with them. This is my idea. Yeah. Um, sort of um, not hugging the picture, but that's something I wrote down, but almost in the picture with them. And the lighting is like, I don't know, somehow down a, down a tunnel is what came to me. I have no idea how to achieve that. But uh, anyway, that was my thought that somehow it should be uh, like looking down a tunnel and the sort of going through dark to get at some light at the end. Whatever that's for. I like it. That sounds so, really great. <laughs> so you so can take that, that photograph, idea. take a photograph of that photograph and then impose yourself in that in, in, in some sort of post process or even incorporate no. the photograph and holding it in a single shot yeah like it's big it's a it's a i think it's a 16 by 24 it's on metal right now oh, so wow it's big so i can uh, get i can get myself in there kind of in front of it a little bit nice i like that idea that sounds great i, I think i think i'll try it later Great. Uh, where are we at with our time? I think we're really close here within seconds. Yes, I, I think I think we're we're at it. If you, um, <laughs> okay. Well, well, this is this is the sentence time. If not, uh, I'll I'll start wrapping this up. Well, okay. Then I'll just say thanks for everybody for coming. And I that went by like a blink. Uh, I have uh, contact information if uh, you want to flash it up on the screen. Um, if you would like to get a hold of me, I'm very keen to talk about these things. I love it. Uh, and I will get back to you if you would like to, to reach out. 
And I'm really grateful that everybody came and uh, thanks so much. Mark, and uh, thank you everyone as well from, from us here at, uh, at Communities Creates for, for joining us today. Um, just a reminder that if you do take what, what we've worked on today and create any self-portraitures, um, we would love to collect it uh, either through social media using the hashtag Communities Create um, or through a form that we'll send share with you via email after the workshop. Um, thanks also to CBC UConn um, for uh, hosting this uh, session and, and connecting us with, with Mark and, and bringing us today's workshop. Um, finally, uh, I hope that you join us for next week's workshop on Monday, um, which is Documenting Elder Stories uh, with Dominique Keller presented by NFB and Story Money Impact. You can also check out the archives of all our workshops at communitiescreate.ca. Uh, we have sessions on writing, digital storytelling, visual art, and mask making, just to name a few. Um, now, uh, to those uh, leaving us now, I say goodbye and, and thank you. Um, if you'd like to uh, stay for a uh, informal well-being and mental health debrief once the stream ends, um, we will be doing that in just a moment uh, and then it'll be over to you, Rachel.